All right, we're back. Fucking sample Sunday. We're gonna be drinking some Listerman Brewing Company, and this one is called Operation Flintlock, and it's a peanut butter stout brewed with coffee, vanilla, peanut butter, and lactose. Six percent. Not too bad for reading it backwards. And then you can see the artwork here is like a fucking pile of peanuts with a fucking army tank on top of it. And a little Easter egg, Toys for Tots. This might be some sort of a fundraising release from the brewery. Anyhow, let's crack it open and see what we're working with. Get a little bit of foam right off the top. Some of that shit went back. All right, let's take a sip. Okay, not huge peanut butter flavor, but it is there. Um, it doesn't have a ton of viscosity. Um, maybe somewhere dried under medium, a little bit thin for my liking. But it has a ton of flavor. Um, I think I'm getting more vanilla um, mixing in with that peanut butter. It is really tasty. I just wish it had like a little bit more viscosity. I don't know what it is, but when I have a stout, I kind of like it to be somewhat chewy. But at 6%, this is pretty crushable. Um, I wouldn't... <clears throat> I wouldn't expect it to be too thick, you know what I mean? Um, kind of funny. It has coffee, but I don't really perceive too much coffee. Hmm. Oh, well. Maybe the sweetness from the vanilla, peanut butter, and lactose kind of covered it up. That's all right, though. It's pretty good taste in beer. <clears throat> So, for sample Sunday, we're going to be using some Lisa's Natural Herbal Creations. Comes in this cool little cosmetic container. Um, I don't know if she still does these for her samples, but fucking awesome little sample container. You could tell it's kind of like something that you might find like women's makeup in, but I thought that was a cool way to repurpose it. Uh, kind of jazz up the sample Sunday um, shave of the day photos we got our that darn hound uh, brush here that darn Rob now known as chiseling hound we got some nice lather built up we got the AP shave co Sinbad knot and some reserve leather in the bowl wanted to go I haven't used um Lisa's um soap in a little while I wanted to use her barbershop but I was like well it's sample Sunday and I do have a sample of the plum tobacco which if uh you're thinking about Asian plum from Ariana and Evans it is nothing really the same this one smells more like a holiday scent it's kind of, um, it's got a little bit of spice with that sweet tobacco. And then I think it just has a little bit of, um, kind of natural plum sweetness to round it out. It's a really nice scent. Smells like, um, something that might be like a candle or something that might be burning during the holidays. I really, um, enjoy it. The soap base <clears throat> on Lisa's, I really enjoy too. I find it gives a really nice post shave. has a lot of thickness. It, um, really the only downside is some of the, uh, I don't really feel as though it whips up into much. Like, 
I feel like all of the uh, awesome skin food and stuff just kind of, it kind of gets absorbed real quick. Now, I'm not saying it like dissipates or has like bad, um, like lather stability or longevity, whatever you want to call it. But I just don't feel like it whips up into much. Like it's, it, I, you load a lot of soap in the bowl, but you don't get like a lot. You know what I mean? We're going to be using my buddy's uh, Dovo that he let me borrow. Uh, I had a very good shave with this the first time around. Let's see if we can do it again. Let me see if I can um, articulate what I mean. The uh, first time I tried Lisa's Naturals, it was in a um, urban fused, what do they call it, bentonite clay formula. And it left your skin feeling good, but it was kind of a, it whipped up into kind of a, an airy high structure lather, but it had decent slickness. And um, a decent post shave. And it had just really plain, simple um, scent offerings that I think just went straight across from her like bath soap offerings. <clears throat> and that was inexpensive. Uh, I believe they were just wrapped in like wrapping paper. They weren't even like in a bowl or anything like that. And um, then she moved to a um, luxury sheep's milk formula, I believe. And that one was... The post shave went really, really through the roof. Um, that sheep's milk really felt nice on the skin. But, and the lather was definitely more creamy. And um, kind of low structure, stayed close to the skin. But, same thing it kind of that one actually did have like some poor lather stability it would dissipate throughout the course of the shave kind of like when you first put it on the skin and it's kind of opaque and you can't really see the, you know, your skin through it. And then, you know, like five minutes later, you're not even done with the first pass. Maybe, <laughs> maybe I shouldn't say five minutes later, but you're not even done with the first pass. And all of a sudden, the uh, lather is kind of starting to fizzle out on your skin. It's starting to kind of become more airy as you shave. And, um, that was one downfall of that soap base. And then she came out with, I think she calls it, like, the premium luxury with sheep's milk. So, I don't think she changed a whole bunch. Because it still acts, um, a lot the same. But it definitely became a bit more stable where it wasn't fizzling out. Excuse me. Where it wasn't fizzling out through the course of the shave. And I think it was a much needed and welcome improvement. But I do feel like it can go just a hair further. It wouldn't deter me from buying one of her soaps because I think the, the post shave on them is really, really nice. Um, <clears throat> and she has some pretty nice scents as well from what I've came across.
She has a few dupes and then a few, um, what do I call it? Original fragrances. And I've uh, talked about Lisa's Natural for quite a while now. I've been a fan of hers ever since the uh, Urban Fused with Bentonite Clay. <clears throat> Just simple shaving soap wrapped up in some wrap instead of in a shaving tub. I feel like this latest iteration is really nice, but I think maybe some of the ingredients are keeping it from whipping up into much. And that is kind of like my one and only gripe. It's not that it dissipates anymore. It's just that whatever it is about it, it just kind of doesn't whip up into much. Like I loaded heavy, I whipped hard, <laughs> and it just kind of stayed. It just kind of stayed at that same like resting spot. Like it, it didn't really whip up into much. So I don't know. I feel like that can be. Improved. I know she asked me a while back, you know, um, what I thought, and I told her this exact thing, but probably much, um, probably made a lot more sense when I was able to, uh, type out my thoughts and really work it out instead of doing it on the fly. But, you, as you can see, now that I've, you know, extracted what was in the brush, it obviously looks a lot better now. <clears throat> it's a very creamy lather. I really like that about it, but I just feel like that's why I specifically use the synthetic today, just for that reason. <clears throat> and I, I loaded heavy as well. Let's kind of pull that hair down. There we go. I don't really pay any mind to the quote-unquote cushion of a soap. But if you were one of those people who cared about the cushion or, you know, so-called protection. I think that having a... Soap that doesn't whip up into much might be a little bit of a deterrent. I will say, you know, once you get it dialed in, it is quite dense and creamy and um, protective, but I just feel like you gotta load the living hell out of it, and maybe a synthetic brush would be a um, safer choice. <clears throat> but I wonder, you know, if she asked me, she probably asked others as well. And I wonder if any changes were um, on the docket, you know, any further improvements were uh, being planned with that feedback because that was after the release and not immediately after it was a while after so I guess long story short she has consistently improved her soap base 
the feedback I gave a while back was I feel like it could go a little bit further but some of the key areas that I had a problem with on the last iteration I feel like are solved now but this iteration kind of had its own drawbacks so I know she can do it <clears throat> if you guys haven't checked out Lisa's maybe uh, take a look at her website the Lisa's natural herbal creations I know it's a long ass name but um, see if she has some samples available you know pick up what sounds good to you and give it a shot I have said multiple times <laughs> that um, I rarely see people using Lisa's Natural Herbal Creations, and I do think it is good stuff. I think when you keep that in mind, you know, the, the few things that I've told you, if you pick up this um, latest offering, the premium luxury soap base with sheep's milk, um, just load heavy. Maybe use a synthetic. If you don't use a synthetic, maybe don't use your your densest lather eater. You know, natural hairbrush. Maybe use something that's a little bit less dense. Sometimes you gotta kind of work around a soap. Sometimes you gotta kind of work around a brush. But once you get to know their quirks then you can unlock, you know, that full enjoyment. <clears throat> so, I'm definitely always on the lookout with um, Lisa's Natural Herbal Creations. When she releases new scents, I'm, I'm right there watching. Um, and then, whenever there's new products, I've tried her Vegan Pulse Shave Balm, which I'm going to be using right after this. I've tried her two-fold pre-shave slash beard oil, which is really good stuff. I used a full bottle of it back in the day. And um, just, she has plenty of things from artisan bath soaps and scrubs and lip balms. And I just feel like you don't really see her talked about as much but she makes some really good stuff I don't think she has like the uh, social media marketing and I don't think the men's shaving is her uh, you know real main focus but I do think the ones who have tried I think like the uh, shaving cadre group really fucks with Lisa like they, um, I think they do testing for her, and she really gets a lot of love from that group, but outside of that group, because, like, if you look it up on Facebook, or not on Facebook, on YouTube, and you're trying to see some, get some other opinions about Lisa's Natural Herbal Creations, you're probably going to see a few Shaving Cadre members, and then me, <laughs> and maybe a few other stragglers, but thing is, I'm telling you, it's good soap. The Plum Tobacco Scent, I don't think ever got released, but it, it was a nice one. Um, I have her barbershop. Really good stuff. Really good stuff. Alright, let's get into some of this. Post Shave Elixir. This has a new label now. Um... It's similar, but I I hope they got one that doesn't get beat up as easily. The pump works well. I've never really had um, too much of an issue. It kind of has that <laughs> really strong, you see how it's squirted? kind of has that really strong um, pump. But if you kind of cup your hands, you can keep it from making a huge mess. And then you just get that around. Get it on the face. 
This one's unscented. It really soaks in quickly. It's lightweight. And it leaves your skin feeling fucking great. I think the new premium is about $21. I think. So not bad. About industry standard anyways. Let's get some up here as well. <clears throat> and that was one hell of a good shave. We knocked out another good shave with that Dovo. Very smooth edge. Feels good in the hand. Nothing really bad to be said about it. My buddy is a lucky man. He's got a nice razor right there. Okay. So, hope you guys enjoyed this shave. I hope you had a good weekend. Cheers. Thank you for all the support. I'll catch you on the next one.